I've just started from Prudimore and I've come to Shellston Tour, which is a beautiful tour with amazing views of Blackatore Copse, which is in the centre of the screen, and up to Lynn's Tour and Great Neeset. The West Oakland Valley is quite an important valley on Dartmoor because it suggests that North Dartmoor was actually, well, possibly glaciated. It is speculated by some geologists that Dartmoor had a small ice cap during the last ice age and that can be seen here with the uh, concave sides of that hillside there and it is steep. I'll be going up that in a bit. Around the corner from here uh, a couple of years ago there was a landslip and I'm hoping to be able to see that in a little bit. During World War II a number of planes accidentally flew into the side of the valley which is a tragic loss. Uh, some of the plane wreckage can still be discerned on the southwest side of the valley and there are there is a new memorial at the top of the valley there commemorating those whose lives were lost or those who were badly injured. Here's the landslip. I wasn't expecting it to be quite as significant as it actually is. I've been viewing it from nearby Blackatore uh, on the other side of the valley but you need to stand just below it here to really see its entire scale. All that pale granite all the way down here. You can see a stream and there's Blackatore. I'm not entirely sure what actually caused the landslip but it did happen at least two years ago. Possibly it was after heavy rainfall and then the hillside just collapsed because of the force of the water. I'm not sure. But this is quite a significant amount of granite just to tumble down the hill. Would have taken some force. This rock here is inscribed with OPB, which denotes Oakhampton Parish Bounds. However, rather strangely, the actual parish boundary between Oakhampton Hamlets and Bridistow and Sawson Common is the river there, which is obviously a natural boundary. However, Oakhampton have had quite a long history of claiming land that isn't actually theirs. Up there, not too far from the landslip that I just showed you, is an area called the Slipper Stones, which are basically flat granite slabs that when wet are quite slippery to stand on, on the really steep side of the valley. Uh, I'll tell you the whole story in a minute, but essentially Oakhampton Parish believed that the Slipper Stones belonged to them and they inscribed a stone and things kicked off. Here is the lowest piece of wreckage from the crash site. There's much more above, but you can see, although the camera won't do it justice, just how steep this hill is and in foggy, rather bad conditions, it's quite easy to see how a pilot could get disorientated and plummet into the side of the hill. This here is the engine. This is the middle heap. Wow, look at all that wreckage there. That's the most I've seen on Dartmoor. I've never actually been here before but I thought I'd come and pay my respects. Whilst it is incredibly sad, the views from here are amazing. Up there you've got Forsland Ledge, Blackatore Cops all the way along there, Blackatore up there, Homerton Hill, South Down, just behind there you've got Shellston Tor. Really, really nice view, but nonetheless a tragic, tragic story. This is the top heap as it is known and there's a really once again substantial piece of wreckage I'm not very good with aeroplanes or aviation but people who are interested might be able to identify certain parts of this wreckage I've just made it to the top of the valley and this is the new memorial stone which was put here in summer 2022 not long before this video actually. I'm now on Stangertor. 
Stangator, or Stinkator as it was once known, is known for being rather wet. All that ground down there, even after a heat wave, is still quite wet. The tour is a boundary mark on the 1240 perambulation that was set out by the Knights to define the uh, Forest of Dartmoor which is quite a long walk, which most people just refer to as the perambulation. It's quite steep coming up from Sandy Ford, which is just at the northern foot of Lintz Tor. Over there you've got Cut Hill, Kitty Tor, that's where I'm off to next. Corn Ridge, and back over to Blacker Tor. This tour is quite underrated really. It's got lovely views, it's quite a striking looking outcrop as well. This is Kitty Tour. It's starting to get really warm now. I had to put the hat on. People who know me know how much I hate hats. Kitty Tour. views from the very top of Kitty Tour are absolutely amazing. Uh, where do I start? To the left of the screen that is Great Mist Tour, then as you move along you've got Great Staple Tour, White Tour, Cox Tour, uh, Hair Tour, Green Tour, that's where I'm off to next. Uh, can you see Sharp Tour? I don't think you can actually. Uh, but you can see Chat Tour, although it's tiny. Lower Dunnegoat Tour, Higher Dunnegoat Tour, Great Links Tour in the middle, that's the Rattlebrook Tramway uh, in the middle. Uh, there you've got Hunt Tour, the very long and featureless Corn Ridge, the military huts, and swing back around. Dinger Tour, Steeperton Tour, Oakmont Hill, Hangingston Hill, and Black Hill, Cut Hill, Fir Tour, uh, and there's a the North Hessery Tour mast over there. I've made it to Green Tor. This is one side of it anyway. There's a range notice board down there. Fur Tor is a very long way away. Excuse the hat. But that was Green Tour, a really beautiful tour. I don't remember it being so big and the views being so good. Uh, I'm now on my way to Bleak House or Dunnegoat Cottage, which was, I believe, where the owner of the Rattlebrook Peat Works once lived. The Rattlebrook Peat Works, just further up the Rattlebrook Valley, was quite an extensive operation and industry, whereby peat was taken from Amicum Hill in uh, turf ties, or peat ties I think they're called actually, and you can see that best when standing on the Dunnegoat Tours, lines on the hill where peat was taken from and then they it would be transported down the Rattlebrook Tramway to, uh, well, I think it was burned. Bleak House. What a lovely spot this is. Dunnegoat Tours. I'll be going up there next. This is Higher Dunnegoat, and over here you can see the remains of what I believe to be a peat cutter shelter, given all the uh, peat activity around here. I reckon this is a peat cutter shelter. Might have been built up a bit since I was last here, actually. I don't know, it's possible. Incredible view though. Really, really nice. There's Great Links Tour. This is yet another parish bound stone. On this side you've got B and S for Bridistow and Sorton. And on the other side you've got an L for Lidford. Lower Dunnegoat. And it's beautiful view down the Rattlebrook Valley. Just approaching Chat Tour now. I can't believe how dry the ground is. There's some heather on the ground, but the area around Chat Tour is normally a bog, 
so I can't believe that my feet are bone dry. Let's get there. It's not huge, but it's a lovely little tour. Amazing views, quite high up, and plenty of solitude. Just coming up to Sharp Tour. You wouldn't know it from here, but this is a magnificent tour with some great outcrops just behind. Heading up to Hare Tour now. Very steep. The name Hare is derived from higher. So uh, it is the higher tour. And below that is Little Hare Tour. The top of Hare Tour, finally. I've just come from Little Hare Tour, which is over there. I forgot to film it. I wasn't there long. There's Hare Tour, there's Sharp Tour. And I'm heading over there to Doe Tour now, through this lovely heather. But yeah, it's getting really, really hot now. I think this is known as Wallabrook Gut. Yes, another Wallabrook. The stream starts just down there, although it's probably quite dry at the moment. Over here is a War Department boundary stone for Willsworthy Range. It's inscribed WD18. There are, I believe, 52, don't quote me on that, stones in this, you know, rough vicinity. And, uh, yeah, I've not walked the entire boundary yet. That's something I'd like to do. Up there's a little hair tour. And I'm heading up to Dotor there, and there's Bray Tor to the right. And Dotor. This is a really large tour. I've not been here for a few years. We're going to climb to the top and then explore some of its other outcrops. And that's a military firing range pole there. It's just outside of the range, but in August they don't do live firing anyway. Summit of Dotor. so pleased to revisit plenty of outcrops lovely views i'd highly recommend a visit i wouldn't suggest going to it via my route you can get there quicker i'd suggest maybe parking at high down and then crossing over the river lid and then following the track towards dotor farm and then heading up onto the moor from there i'm now on my way to find somewhere to have a swim when I say swim, more like paddle, because I don't think there's going to be much water in Dotor Brook. We'll have to wait and see. I've just had a wild swim. That was lovely. I say swim, paddle, because there wasn't that much water in the Dotor Brook. Uh, when taking my socks off, I accidentally uh, dropped one of them into the water. So that was lovely. We don't talk about that. Here is another inscribed stone. Yes, another one. Uh, this one is TRDC which stands for Tavistock Rural District Council and it's to do with water extraction, something like that. Up there's Sharp Tor, Hair Tor and O Tor and I'm now making my way up to Bray Tor. As is always the way, a little further downstream there's a much better spot. Look at this place. Wow. Then there's this artificial weir and I believe by those two posts there's a pipe which takes water somewhere. That might explain the TRDC posts. There's Bray Tor and Ridgeby Cross. Just been up there, but quite a few flies, so I didn't spend long. Tremendous views. I'm now heading below Arms Tour towards Great Norden. 
over there you can see Arms Tour. From Bray Tour, I went just below Arms Tour, then I dropped down into the Lid Valley, walked up the valley. Over there you've got various tin works and streamings, and I've just come up this path. There's Great Links Tour, and I'm now at the bridge, which is the Rattlebrook Railway, which, as I mentioned earlier, was basically where all of that peat on Amicum Hill was transported off. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I assume this bridge was put here to enable farmers to move cattle, sheep and ponies from side to side. I'm now turning left for Salton Tours, leaving the tramway railway. I actually don't know which term is more correct. I think it was actually a tramway. I'm not sure. Sort and Tours lie over there. Left for Sort and Tours. That's Corn Ridge. That track there goes over to Russellbrook Railway towards Gren Tour. And that one there goes down towards the railway again, but Great Nodden. Just over the brow of the hill, you've got Lake Viaduct. Seems to be a fire over in Cornwall. Uh, you can't see the satellites at Morwenstow anymore. I don't think. It's hazed over a little bit. Just approaching source and tours. Plural because there are several tours on this hillside. Sorton is kind of interesting because it's, it's a non-granite series of tours as opposed to the typical granite that you see on the moor. There are two main rock ridges. The upper one and the summit here where the trig is is a different type of non-granite rock to the lower ridge which dominates the village of the same name below and the trig point trigs a couple of key chains summit outcrop look at those views wow awesome So as I'm leaving Sorton, I would like to say thank you for watching. I don't record all of my walks. I find it to be quite a lot of effort, to be honest, because I'm rubbish at filming. Nothing's steady. I didn't bring the tripod this time because I'd rather use my walking poles to grip to the hillsides a bit better, especially that Death Valley. Oh. And... Uh, also, it's kind of nice not to have to worry about filming everything because, I mean, I forgot to film a little hair tour, for example. No big deal. So, uh, see you in the next one.